So I just finished watching David Lowry's The Green Knight, and this ending had me feel like my head was chopped off. Off with his head! Rip his head off! But my decapitated head aside, I took some time to reflect on Sir Gawain's journey and have pieced together what that tragic ending means as well as some of the film's biggest unanswered questions. Like what is the fox, who is the Green Knight, and how come Dev Patel hasn't won an Oscar yet? So join me on this journey as we explore this tragic tale, and if you like what you're hearing, be sure to like and subscribe. I come out with all sorts of videos on film theory, analysis, and deep dives. The Green Knight starts ominously with our lead, Sir Gawain, sitting on the throne as king. He is the nephew of King Arthur, yes that King Arthur of Camelot, and since Arthur has no heir, Gawain is next in line to the throne. But this introduction foreshadows the film's tragic end as Gawain bursts into flames, just like his kingdom will under his rule, but we'll get to that in a bit. It's Christmas and Gawain, a knight of the round table, has spent the previous night at the brothel indulging in women and drink. He is basically the opposite of what a noble knight should be. The question then becomes, when Gawain ultimately embarks on his quest, will he change? Will he become a better man and knight worthy of the round table? We meet Gawain's mother, Morgan Le Fay, who in the poem the story is based off is Arthur's half-sister. In some versions of this tale, Morgan is an antagonist to Arthur, wanting to usurp his throne, and that's one interpretation of the events that are about to transpire. Note here that Morgan is also upset that her son was out at the brothel instead of at church. We'll later find out that it was Morgan, a sorceress trained under Merlin, who we see briefly in the film, that summoned the Green Knight in the first place. The movie never explains why she does this. Was it to test her son, sending him on this quest to make him a better man? Or was it all a ploy for her to eventually get her son on the throne? On Christmas, the King, Queen Guinevere, and the Knights of the Round Table celebrate when Gawain is brought to sit alongside the King. He asks Gawain to tell him a mighty tale, to which he responds he has none to tell. That's because Gawain is an unproven knight. But this is soon to be rectified when the celebration is interrupted by the Green Knight holding a note sealed in green wax. The same note we see Gawain's mother writing. The Green Knight challenges one who is of bold blood and honor to strike him down and, if successful, will have one year to travel to the Green Chapel, return his axe, and be struck down in return. But the king tells Gawain, who's up for the challenge, don't worry, it's all a game. Or is it? As Gawain accepts the challenge, he's surprised when instead of fighting, the Green Knight merely kneels and presents his neck to be cut clean off. There's no honor in this, and perhaps this could be interpreted as Gawain's first knightly test. Traditionally, the medieval code of knighthood and chivalry held five virtues among all else. This is why the Knights of the Round wear a five-pointed star, a reminder of these virtues. As Gawain embarks on his quest, he will be tested on these five virtues. They are generosity, chastity, friendship, courtesy, and piety. And let me tell you, he fails miserably. The first virtue test Gawain encounters on his journey is generosity. As he passes an abandoned battlefield, he uncovers a young scavenger who has lost his two brothers. Gawain doesn't give the boy so much as a, hey, I'm sorry for your loss, not to mention the boy has to practically beg for payment when he gives Gawain directions to the Green Chapel. And even when Gawain does give him something, it's only a single coin. Gawain fails this test. The second virtue is courtesy. He stumbles into a stranger's home and falls asleep on their bed. Very courteous. He'll later be awoken by the lady of the house, Winifred, who asks for his help in retrieving her head from the bottom of a pond. Instead of doing so out of courtesy, he asks what he'll get in return, only to be chastised by her. Gawain is also discourteous when he breaks the deal he has with Joel Edgerton's character, The Lord. The deal states that everything the Lord earns on his hunt will be given to Gawain, and everything Gawain earns in the house will be given to the Lord. Gawain fails to tell the Lord that he was given a magical green sash by the lady of the house, a sash that will protect him from a kill blow. The lady here is also played by the same actress, Alicia Vikander, who plays Essel. Gawain's peasant love interest. It just goes to show that Gawain can't be taken as a reliable narrator, and as such, everything we see him go through might not be what it seems. We see him hallucinate several times in the film, like when he sees his own dead body, or after eating poisonous mushrooms. That means things like the fox and the giants may never have been real in the first place. I did enjoy the giant scene and how Gawain asked one of them for a lift across the valley, 
Valley. That would have been the easy and unheroic way of achieving his journey, which is why the fox tells the giants to screw off. Foxes are often seen as tricksters, however in the Celtic belief system they are also seen as spirit guides and symbols of the afterlife, which is what I interpret this version as being. There are several images in the film which depict a human head on a fox's body, which could mean the fox is a manifestation of Gawain's inner desire to do well on his quest. The fox also ties directly into the third chivalric virtue, friendship. At first Gawain throws rocks at the fox, but the two soon become friends. It's at the end, however, when the friendship is broken as Gawain scares off the fox who tries to ward him away from death. The fourth virtue, everyone's favorite, is chastity. As a guest in the Lord's Manor near the end of his journey, he falls prey to the Lady of the House's seduction, and when he finally climaxes, she tells him he's no knight. I should also bring up this weird blind lady here who is seen yet never says a word during this entire sequence. The only other person to wear a blindfold like this is Gawain's enchantress mother, Morgan, this is likely her watching over her son on this journey. The final virtue is piety. We've seen how Gawain isn't religious in the slightest, preferring to spend Christmas Eve at the brothel. Gawain's actions do not stem from a desire to please God or the king. They stem from a desire to please himself. He puts himself before others and as such fails this virtue. Harnessing these five virtues makes one honorable and in the world of King Arthur, one's worth was judged by one's honor. This leads us to the moral lesson of the Green Knight, which one of the A24 trailers states is, In this tale lies a moral lesson that echoes through time, to make honor our guiding light through the darkest of our journeys. So Gawain fails these five tests, but makes his way to the Green Chapel to confront the Green Knight in one final test. Will Gawain have the courage to be struck down by the Green Knight and honor his deal with this magical entity? The answer, no and yes. At first, Gawain flinches as the Green Knight swings his axe, and ultimately, Gawain runs away a coward. We then see what his life would be like should he return back home. He'll become king, and he accepts knighthood, even though we've just seen him be nothing but undeserving of it. He'll take Essel's and his child, and because Essel isn't noble, will discard Essel to live the rest of the days without him and their child, paying her money for her quote-unquote services. As he grows older, he'll watch his son die in battle, then return home having shit flung at him like Joffrey in Game of Thrones. He is an unloved leader. This ultimately ends with an attack on the castle where he takes off his green sash, the thing that protects him, accepting his fate and dying with neither honor nor nobility. But just as that's about to happen, we're transported right back when Gawain is about to get his head chopped off. It's almost as if he has seen his life, or should I say future life, flash before his eyes. Instead of running this time, he takes off the sash and accepts his fate. He would rather die an honorable person than live out a dishonorable life filled with pain, misery, grief, and death. The Green Knight tells him, well done my brave knight. He has finally become that knight, and maybe that's what his mother, who conjured the Green Knight in the first place, wanted from her son, to turn him into an honorable man. So the ending can be interpreted one of three ways. One, Gawain flees like a coward to become king and lead his kingdom to ruin. Two, Gawain is beheaded and dies an honorable man. Or three, Gawain chooses to die, but is spared by the Green Knight to go back home and change the course of his ways. Remember, we never actually see the the Green Knight behead him, and his final line, off with your head, I interpret it as being delivered more jokingly. So who is the Green Knight? Winifred says it's someone he knows, which ties directly into the theory he was conjured by his mother. There are never any signs that his mother wants to kill him. This is why I happen to subscribe to the third interpretation that this was all a ploy by his mother to smarten Gawain up to better prepare him for his future as king. I see him coming back home and having learned from the error of his ways become a different king than the one we saw depicted in the film's final moments. A king with honor and integrity, a brave knight as the Green Knight called him. But that's the beauty of this open-endedness, it's open to interpretation. As stated in one of the A24 trailers, scholars believe the Green Knight's character also symbolizes a respect for nature, the unknown, and death. This harkens back to the speech the lady gives Gawain about why the Green Knight is green. And I want to hear what you thought of the Green Knight. Do you have a different interpretation? I want to hear your thoughts and theories in the comments below. Thanks for watching everyone, remember to like and subscribe, and for more bad takes you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, Daddy loves you very much.